And then there was a moment to like think to the very beginning, what was I always good at? What did I always love doing? How did I see things, like even as a child, as a student? And that was line. And welcome to episode 13 of Lo-Fi Podcast. I am John Wentz, recording conversations with artists, musicians, and filmmakers from my studio in Paris, France. Just a couple of things before we get on to the episode. First off, this episode is sponsored by No Wave Academy. So at nowaveacademy.com, you can view an array of instructor videos. They have videos from people, painters such as Sean Cheatham, Mia Bergeron, Steve Kim, Paul Christina, myself, and many more. And with this code, LOFI-10, that's all caps, L-O-F-I-10, you can get 10% off any of your purchases. So just use that code at checkout to get your discount. Um, take advantage of it. These are really Really good videos. Um, I've watched a few of them myself, and I keep learning from from all these great artists. It's such a privilege. Um, secondly, thanks for all the feedback. Uh, I've been getting uh, some emails through Instagram, again through the new website at lofipodcast.com. Um, I appreciate uh, all the good words, all the encouragement, and uh, all the criticism. You know, constructive criticism, <laughs> but. With that being said, uh, if you want to leave a message, if you don't know already, you can go to lofipodcast.com and reach us there at lofipod2020 at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, if you want to just drop a line, uh, say hello, request a guest. I have guests lined up, but I'm always open to see who you want to hear from. Um, So drop a line there. And lastly, uh, or almost lastly... Hope everyone's happy and healthy. Um, I myself have got a pretty bad cold here in Paris. I'm watching the coronavirus just explode and uh, hope everybody's staying safe and not panicking. (laughs) Panic's the worst. And lastly, I just really want to thank my guest today, Agnes Kraholska. Um, Agnes is a phenomenal painter, a phenomenal human being, and it was such a privilege and honor to speak with her and have a conversation. She took, a, it was a good hour, hour and a half out of her time to chat with me, and I really, really very much enjoyed it. I've been following her work on Instagram for a very long time, and she's nothing short of an inspiration. So thank you again, Agnes, for this. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this conversation with Agnes Grohalska. So how are things uh, How are things over in Richmond in the States? Uh, good. You know, it's probably the same as, as in Europe. People talk about the, the virus. That's like, oh, no. the, yeah, yeah, the main thing. Yeah, yeah. And you know how people get, like the stores are emptied out. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> yeah. panic. Yeah. The panic and silly things too. I mean, you know, of course, like soap and detergents, but toilet paper. Toilet. I know. I've seen that in the news. Yeah. (laughs) I I don't know. Like, what's the connection there? But I see none. I mean, I wanted to think maybe because I know Americans generally uh, blow their nose with toilet paper, Ah. so maybe it just wasn't for bathroom. But (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. So it's yeah, but. No, other than that, it's good. You know, it's spring in Virginia already, so it's oh, nice and pretty. Lucky. So, w- how different? When did you move to the states from? Because you're you were born in Poland, correct? Yeah, I was born and raised in Poland, and went to school in Poland. So I went to an art school. Okay. In in Warsaw. From the and beginning, I, your schooling was at an art school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I I started that. We um, we left Poland pretty early, though, because we left for college, for my, my husband's school, actually. We lived for a couple of years in Belgium, so close to you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My neighbor. Yeah, your neighbor by Brussels, yeah. living in, yeah, close to Brussels. And then we moved to the States for uh, for his PhD. Uh, and we okay. just kind of never went back, not planning on it, really. It was like doing one school after another and then job. And and just, I don't know, you know, started family. Kids, you know, grew up here and kind of. Yeah, yeah. So wait, wait, what I, year was that that you moved to the U.S.? Uh, nine. Roughly? 
I'm counting by my children's age. 97? <laughs> 98? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, we moved to, from Poland because we lived in Belgium. Uh, 2000? Yeah, I think 2000 when we moved to, to the States. Okay. It's, so you know, it's funny. Cause still, years, almost. Yeah, I was just going to say it's still in my head. I'm not used to 2020. So when you right, say that, I'm right. like, I'm like, oh, it was five years ago. I'm like, yeah. Nah. <laughs> no. 20 yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did you find the transit? Because I'm really, I was really fascinated to talk to you for multiple reasons. Uh, one, I love your work. You did the opposite thing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah, so it's interesting to me, people moving to the US from Europe, what the difference mm. was. How was it for you coming from here? Uh, crazy, you know, everything <laughs> was different. But because we never, you know, I didn't move with the idea um, I'm moving to live here. You know, this is, this is it. It was very gradual, you know, you're like, oh, learning new things. Yeah, it's different, but that's fine. I'll be back. You know, I'll, I can do it for five years or for, you know, three years, whatever. And then it's just, uh, I don't know, grows on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a cold, like a virus. <laughs> like a virus, I guess. Yeah. We also, you know, we first lived in uh, Minnesota. In Minneapolis. Oh, I love Minnesota. Yeah. Minneapolis? Us, oh, Minneapolis, yeah. So that's completely different too, you know. Yeah. Minneapolis and, you know, Richmond, Virginia. So that's like two different A little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we got like an easy in <laughs> into that. Nice. You know, yeah. culture and, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I think Minneapolis is probably one of my favorite places in the U.S. I'm with um, you. Yeah, especially. I mean, the people, the music. There's so many great uh, venues. I yeah. mean, and yeah. the best Bloody Mary I ever had in my <laughs> life was in Minneapolis. <laughs> really? Was it one of those when they like load up veggies and pickles and stuff like on a? It was, like but it wasn't not, not like the burgers where they'll put now they okay, put like okay. burgers oh. and all that. You know, no, it was just some vegetables. Some, but yeah. 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 And so why, um, so what brought you from then Minneapolis to Virginia? Job. My husband's Jobs. job. Okay. That's yeah. Work. Yeah. yeah. And was that tough for you um, as an artist? Because I know you took a little bit of a break, right? A long, a, a long break. Long, How long? So what, yeah. that was when you had children. So right. How long? Right. So Tell about, me about that. 20 years or so of a break. Yeah. Because wow. I went to an art school I didn't finish because we left for Belgium, kind okay. of thinking I'll come back and, and do the rest. We never did. We never made it back. And I was home, you know, uh, with with little kids. And there was no time for anything else. Not that I yeah. really wanted to. I, you know, kind of the space in my mind was, was you know, there wasn't any. <laughs> except yeah, for, yeah. Which, yeah, it's it's a natural thing. And I was ready to do to do one thing that was family and only after my oldest our oldest went to college or like almost was ready to leave for college and our youngest went full time to school and i had like a large nice chunk of time during the day yeah i started like gradually you know doing something yeah what did you start with Graphic design, actually, because my major in art school was industrial design. So it wasn't even, you know, like a fine art degree. I mean, it was in a the way it's probably similar in, you know, where you are in France or other European countries that the way the art school works is like one art academy was called. Mm -hmm. And you are all together, but uh, you can choose later different, different majors. So the first two, three year. Uh, three years of school was just kind of painting, drawing, sculpture for everyone, and mm -hmm. then you specialize. So the part okay. that I did was kind of, you know, everything, a little bit of everything. Uh, but my my degree was supposed to be in industrial design, mm -hmm. which I never really did. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But, but going back to doing art, I started with graphic design, just thinking, you know, that's something I know I can do from home and just like a little bit, you know, whenever I have time. 
And I did, and it was yeah. fun, and it it did work doing from home. I just got bored really quick with with, with graphic with, design in general. Graphic, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's okay. it's fun, but it's very client oriented, and nothing wrong with it if you know that's how you kind of roll. I yeah, it was just I don't know. I wanted something something else. Yeah, and that's interesting because I, I would assume then. Um, do you mind do I, if I ask what year this was yeah. that you started getting back into it? Seven years ago, six years ago. Okay. Okay. So yeah. you. So that means then when you started back in, it was on computer. Right. Right. Interesting. And How was that an, for you? Yeah, that's another thing because you know when I went to school, even though I was supposed to, you know, do graphic design and in, in design in general. There was no computer programs, you know. We didn't. Like, yeah. Photoshop was new, <laughs> you know, like well, that. Yeah. And nothing really, nothing else. So yeah, I had to learn on my own, kind of, you know, looking for tutorials on on. It's so easy and, now, though, huh? Yes. Yeah. Of yeah. course, you can YouTube, YouTube. everything <laughs> and just do step by step. Yeah. And yeah, so I taught myself that and and done that for a little bit. And then you got bored and then... And then I got bored and I was like, what do I really want to do? And what I really wanted to do was was draw, paint, you know, like the real yeah. stuff. There is something... Um, I bet it's like that for most of us artists. You know, when you're a kid and you're the kid that draws and is good at it yeah. and you love it, but then comes time to go to school and... Most of us will think like, okay, but how do I support myself? Or, you know, what, what how, you can't be yeah. an artist, you know, you can't just paint all day. That's, that's not doable. Yeah. That's how it was for me. So I was thinking, okay, I want to do art, but what can I really do in life with for art? So I was thinking architecture, design, you know, that kind more of practical both, things. More practical, yeah. Something yeah. That you can find, find work, find a job after. Yeah. So does that mean when you were in university, did you take many fine art classes? Uh, I took painting, drawing, sculpture, like I'm saying. It was a little bit, it was kind of designed for, for you know, designers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we had, it was very open studio type of, you know, hands-free. It's not something you would get in, you know, like the Russian Academy you know, wrapping academy or somewhere where you have very structured. Yeah, they're wrapping you on the knuckles. Right, no, no, no. Proportions are there off. Was, <laughs> there was a model, you know, and we would mm -hmm. stand around and it was like, just go for it. You know, this is your model. And then the professor would come around at the end and kind of correct your work, meaning, you know, give you pointers or or not, depending on the... <laughs> Depends yeah. on the professor. <laughs> depending on the professor, depending on the day. Yeah, very, yeah. very kind of... <laughs> I don't know, open, hands-free, yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about that type of instruction? Do you think it's, it, yeah, it well, works? Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 no, okay. not really. I bet it works at some point, you know. Yeah, or you for need, some people. Or for some yeah. people. But yeah. I would say you do need instruction at first. You need to learn the basics. You need to know what you're doing and then take it wherever you want. Yeah. I think the assumption was because the way the way the um, art school, the art academy worked, and I think still is in Poland, it's free. You mm -hmm. don't pay for it, but you have to get in, and there is a large, you know, number of people trying for very few spots. Our our yeah. year, so our whole year of of uh, design was twenty five people. You know, that's like the whole that will graduate after uh, five years. Um, so it's very hard to get in. Once you're in, they kind of assume that you must know something already, that you probably went through a, a high school, like an art mm -hmm. program high school, or you took uh, private classes, some kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, <laughs> really involved program. So you know the basics. You need, don't need to be taught the side size side method or, or construction yeah. or anatomy things like that you just need to develop uh, your skills further yeah okay. yeah yeah that reminds me of the um, i saw that in did you see that stanislav zukowski documentary struggle uh no um do you know him he's a polish sculptor yeah, I know him. I don't think I've heard about the. the ah, it's on. If yeah. you have Netflix, it's on Netflix. I, okay. I enjoyed it, but they um, 
he, he, he was way earlier. I forgot what year he entered, but there's a big section where he's talking about that, mm-hmm. how hard it was to get in their expectations, right. what you're supposed to know. Yeah. It's really interesting compared to the, uh, American method. Yeah. 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 <laughs> where it's more how much money you have. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was free. I oh, that's amazing. I, I, I don't really know if it's still probably is the public because, you know, the way it works, the system, the, the, the best public schools are free. And then you yeah. do have, you know, mm, uh, private schools and po- for-profit schools, which you can go to and pay, and it's a little bit easier depending on the on the name. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So you have option. Yeah. So, and that's interesting too. So, two things that hit me right away when you're talking is I wondered if because you have such a beautiful linear quality to your work, Hmm. like almost everything I've seen, maybe except for some landscapes have some kind of linear vocabulary to it. Right. Is that come at all from the, your background in technical drawing or industrial? It might, it might. (laughs) You're like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I know how it is. Like everything in life, everything's connected, you know, I bet it does influence my work. But the way I was drawn to, you know, like architecture or drawing like that, it's because it's in me as well. It's kind of like how I see things. I remember being a kid and like outlining everything, you know, like contour was, was my thing. Contours, and, oh, right. Okay. And the art teacher will come around and say, well, there is no line in nature. <laughs> you know, where is your shading? And where that. is your color? And I don't know. That's how I see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's such a weird, yeah, because I, I, I maybe had one or two art instructors who thought about that or who said things like that. And I always find that bizarre because, I mean, even some of the oldest books, uh, like you read, like I think it was John Ruskin or some of those schools talk about like the vocabulary of art and how integral line is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So to tell yeah. someone like yeah. you, like, there's no line in nature. Tuck, no, tuck. You're not supposed to like, <laughs> separate, you know, two things. There is yeah, yeah. no edge. Interesting. Uh, and the other thing I find really fascinating, um, given your the situation you're talking about raising a family, and it, it, sadly yeah. enough, this is a weird serendipity, but just last night I was watching the Alice Neal documentary. Ah, yeah. And it hit me two things. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't like comparing people's work. So it's not a comparison, but I was like, whoa there's elements that is like i can see in agnes's work um well it's a great comparison i'll 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 happily if you're gonna compare take it (laughs) (laughs) it's a good thing um but then i was the the situations are so similar but in the effect though it had on her family the choices she made so i i'm wondering and i'm I'm sorry i don't we don't have to get too personal about no no, go go ahead um how tough was that a tough decision for you did you to feel go back to art or to start no, first family? to make that first decision of like family first? I'll put art to the side for a while, and um, then it wound up being twenty years. Again, I didn't really make the decision in the beginning because you okay. know we were taking like little breaks. Like, okay, we'll go for a year for this program, then okay, that ended, but there is two more that we can do, and then go back. I was all, always in the back of my mind was we're going back. I'll finish my program. You know, oh, okay. and do that. And yeah. then once having children, and I have a few, so, you know, like <laughs> one kid or two, you can still do it. After like the third one, I was like, okay, I'm going to be stuck for a while. <laughs> for I, a while. Oh, you have three? Well. I have five. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, there is an. <laughs> okay. That's it's great. Like reveal on lo fi the- with John. Yeah. Got the scoop. <laughs> Yeah, you got this. Cool. That's amazing. Oh, that's yeah, so cool. Yeah, so I thought I might just as well, you know, submerge and do that thing well. <laughs> and when yeah. I'm done raising children and just, and it really takes everything out of you, you at least out of me. I, I only can speak for myself. I'm sure there are women and, you know, people, parents yeah. who can juggle and divide we were you know on our own own because uh, we left family behind and it was the two of us and my husband was involved with his program and his work and i was the one with with children so to do it well to be you know fully with them and present and everything i knew i i can't think about colors and shapes <laughs> right now yeah yeah and yeah. i was happy doing it 
Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine because I, you know, diving into the, that documentary, when you see, I remember there's even a, a part where one of her, her, I don't know, it was one or two of the children are just playing on the ground and she's painting them. Uh-huh. And it's uh-huh. kind of, at one end, it's a, it, it was a beautiful moment, but on the other end, from a, I felt from a practical standpoint, you see a certain amount of neglect as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, her story is heartbreaking too. It is, of, yeah. Yeah, of the history with the daughter, you know, the first child. So and, sad. Yeah. 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 yeah, so sad. And and then as artists too, we can all understand that drive as well and the obsession yeah. with your art. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I can imagine on your end, like how you're saying, like it takes your con- all your concentration. It does. With the family. Yeah. Do you come from a big family? No, I don't. But that was always my oh. dream. And, you know, sometimes people ask and I'll say, I blame Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you've watched that series. When yeah, you yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I did. And I was like, that's, that's it. That's the dream life. I'm going to do it. <laughs> a, a house, uh, a little cabin. Yeah, a, a big family. yeah kids and dogs running around. And, yeah. yeah, it's the best. I, I, cause my, um, on my mother's side, uh, my mother is from the Philippines mm. and, um, we have a huge family, not my immediate, but she grew up with 11 brothers and sisters. Oh, wow. So I love big families. It's yeah. so much fun. Yeah. And the, it, it becomes from, I think that maybe in your situation, it was like this, I found like past three, it becomes more than family. It kind of becomes community, <laughs> right. you know, it's, it's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, so then after, so was, did you wait until the fifth child was until he was age. old enough, yeah. Now, like I said, he went to school. So the preschool years, especially okay. in, in the States, you know, it's like three hours here and there. It's not like a yeah. full-time program. So after he went to school, to kindergarten, and was, you know, gone until two or so, then um, I felt like, okay, now I have the time, a uh, couple of hours a day when I can brief <laughs> and yeah, yeah. think uh, about uh, something else and slowly very slowly I, mm-hmm. yeah did you start with paints did you go start with drawing what did uh, you go back into? i started not mentioning the graphic design thing uh i started with figure drawing going so i yeah. uh, uh, signed up i mean like you don't even have to sign up there there was like an open drawing um studio with like open sessions. So you kind of like for life drawing for life drawing. So you drop in whenever chip in together for a model and you have three hours or something of, of drawing time. And I always loved it. Like at school, that was something that I really enjoyed. And I thought like, I'll start with that and started going somewhat regularly, like once a week to do that. And sure enough, yeah, that was it. Like I, I still loved it. <laughs> I, I liked That's it. That's a relief. I, yeah, yeah. I was getting better at it. You know, the more I, I, I did that, and and it also got me, you know, thinking like I really want to do it. That's that's what drives me. And yeah, everything was just kind of reinvigorated yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't, man, life drawing. I haven't done a life mm-hmm. drawing class in so long. I mean, that, that's interesting to me, too. That's amazing that it, you went in. I mean, was it from, was there any frustration going back into it? Sure. Mostly, you know, again, time managing, like actually sure. finding the time. It was Friday nights and Friday, you know, at the end of the whole week. And I had to, you know, prepare everything and leave the house in order and, and go and drive because it was farther away. So like the yeah. time managing and, and, you know, not being like, tired <laughs> enough yeah. but, but what about but the um i was there oh you mean like frustration that it's not coming like with the drawing itself yeah right right it didn't look the way i wanted especially <laughs> in, the, in the beginning but yeah i feel like i understood that i wasn't expecting i'm gonna be right on my you know the right track right away yeah yeah and i need time and I was so happy just to be there, you know, like once I was standing in front of the easel, I like, it doesn't matter how it looks. The process is really why I'm here. I, yeah. you know, I didn't think, you know, I need to produce great work so I can show it or sell it or nothing like that. I just wanted to do it. I really right. wanted, you know, the three hours with the, with 
and you know blank paper and 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 charcoal was was all I wanted out of it. Do you think it was the different for you like would it have been a different situation if you tried like by yourself like in the studio with a mo- or just you know not even with a model just painting from a photo because i'm as you're yeah, saying that yeah. you, you kind of started to remind me of what it was like in school like i loved that whole atmosphere like i love uh-huh. being in the room with other artists there's a model there's a, a group seriousness and yeah. it really gets you in that focus but you know you know it's like spending time alone in the studio sometimes you're like oh this is I dragging bet. on. <laughs> yeah, it is. I bet both, you know, both are important. Yeah. I'm glad I had both. I mean, the studio part came later, but I like that part too. You know, like uh-huh. I, I don't think I could share a studio like for everyday practice with somebody. And again, I'm sure you can get used to it and, and uh, yeah, just plug in to the energy of the group. But I, I like my studio. I like being alone with in it and kind of figuring stuff out but i also like the group here the participating yeah Yeah. open so yeah and then when did um because i was looking i have your instagram open right now because i was just Uh double checking some things um and what was your evolution like then jumping back into it? Cause I've seen mm-hmm. like you have figure drawings and then you went into landscape. Yeah. Yeah. For so a bit. I think I kind of like tried to do the art school thing for myself. So, you know, oh, like interesting. If, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, like to do the plein air outside and, and do a little bit of everything, like know how to paint landscape, know how to draw a landscape, know how to do anatomy and you know, figure human form and know how to do the portrait and a little bit of still life too. Like, why not? If I'm, if I want to be a, yeah. a painter, I should not that I have to do everything, but I should know how to do pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. So I think I did kind of like a little bit of an art program for myself, just kind of picking and choosing the things that I thought are important mm-hmm. to know. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And how, how long? Did that go on until you felt like you were finding your voice? You know, I'm still (laughs) on that endeavor. Yeah. Yeah. But you now you have a very, like, if when I'm, you know, I don't look at names usually when I'm scrolling through, but I know your paintings when I see them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, from that perspective, when did you feel like it was like? It's a good question. Well, my, um, the last year solo show, which was called Line and Color, I kind of like decided Mm -hmm. I'm going to make that about what I really love and what I feel like I was always about. So it's kind of like going back, like you look for different things, you look at the different art, you're trying to gather as much, right? Like into your your bag, into your portfolio as much as you can. And then there was a moment to like think, to the very beginning, what was I always good at? What did I always love doing? How did I see things, like even as a child, as a student? And that was line. And that was, well, the color yeah. kind of came later, but the line was the first thing. And um, and it really is how I see things in my yeah. mind, you know, the little like mapping. Contour. And the, right, the contour yeah. comes first, and then the little mapping on the faces you know, like when I look at somebody, I really like, I don't know what it is, like intellectually kind of think about where the shadow ends. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, those those little planes, which, you know, you you see in construction too, in like mm-hmm. Loomis mm-hmm. or, or. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I thought, why not? I, I really should be, you know, true to what, what, what I, how I feel it, how I see it. And, and yeah, and kind of draw on that and. Uh-huh. Yeah, anchor it there. And that's how yeah. that, that show came about, line and color. And I think since then, I'm kind of like looking more into what, what comes natural, what, what I love, what I was always interested in, and, and build, build on that. Mm-hmm. In doing that, do you, do you feel like you're, um, cause I'm, I'm assuming you're probably the same where even sometimes when we change a body of work, I find like, I know for myself and other friends, you kind of have your little toolbox of artists you're kind of thinking about maybe like, okay, I got a little Lucian Freud in here. I got a little, right, right. and then eventually you start dropping that 
as you're going along and you yeah. find your path. It was one of those things for you. Yeah, like a, yeah. you just dropped everything and Yeah, definitely. And there are also new ones, you know, like some new 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 even Alice Neal that you mentioned, it's not somebody I knew, like, you know, coming from, from Europe. It's not a name that gets, you know, mentioned in art books, Alice Neal. Mm-hmm. So I haven't seen her work before i haven't known about her and after you know starting instagram and all the social media and people commenting with her name on my work i went you know back and like googled her name and looked at her work and bought some books and i was like yeah i can see why they saying that but it's mm-hmm. not somebody that was on the back of my mind so new ones come, you know, I knew yeah. Lucian Freud, you mentioned, I knew his work and I can see that, you know, how m- my painting might be influenced by that or, you know, the giant, some giants like Van Gogh <laughs> with the heavy yeah. texture in pastel and, mm-hmm. and, and love of color. But there are also some new ones that I'm happy to discover and maybe borrow a, a bit, you know, it's not... Uh, I don't know how conscious those things are, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, sometimes they are, sometimes yeah. they're not. And then I find it interesting too, like you're saying, um, how you didn't know of Alice Neal, but you were still maybe had similarities to it. That kind of, I, I, mean, I guess you just call it parallel thinking. I mean, I guess with art, there's only, especially in realism, yeah, there's only so yeah, many things so you can much, do, anyways. Right, right. But I've had that too. Like people will compare it to something. I'm like, who is that? I've never heard of that. And then I'd look at him like, Jesus. Like, yeah, I can't. Yeah. I wish I could remember a name because I remember somebody pointing somebody out, and I was like, wow, it looks like I'm completely ripping this person off. That is insane. <laughs> it's, yeah, we're not that unique. The same thing no. happens, you know, <laughs> like when you post a painting, a portrait of somebody, and people comment with names of their friends. Yes, oh. I, get, I get DMs, you know, messages like, "Is it me? Did you find my?" Yes. I'm like, it's impossible. Also, it's like ten different people, but you know, sometimes I'll click at their names that they, you know, commented, or they. I'm sure enough, it could be him or her. Yeah, <laughs> or sometimes not at all. I'm like, not, what are you yeah, thinking? That, that happens too. But you yeah. know, the, the more surprising is when it does look very similar to somebody yeah. that you ha- don't know and had no idea. And like, yeah, I guess we're not that, not that special, not that unique. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, after painting, and, that, and that's. I, you, I think we also have sort of a privileged perspective as as painters and you and specifically like the the realm you and I are in as portrait painters or figure painters you do a lot of observing mm. and don't you think after a while you're like there's not a lot of differences between us no between more, and, more similarities than yeah, differences yeah we're way more similar than different which translates to many other things in life you know we're all more similar than different and, I know, and that's yeah. a good kind of good you know base well, why can't kind we all get connection. along? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Be kind to each other. Yeah. How was that for you also in taking that break and then you come back and then you have this platform of social media also? Yeah, fantastic. So you, it was like made a, for people like me, you know? Right? Yeah. yeah. And you've done well. You're very active on social media. Yeah, I thought, you know, why if it's there, I'm going to use it. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's to play with. And as long as you remember that it's a, you know, it's a tool. Yeah. You know, use it for what what it was. Don't put all your hopes into it because, yeah, that will use you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The other way around. Yeah, or or your, your I don't know, I can't think of the right word, not your ego into it, but so many people put so much of their emotion yeah, and their feelings yeah. no, and take it too serious. You can't. It's a, it's a tool. It's a platform. For you... And I've talked about this with other people. I, I would assume when you were in school, thinking about art as a profession, we remember that time before you had this this platform of social media uh-huh. Uh-huh. and how much more difficult it was. I don't you know, even know how it was, you know, because I wasn't, Cause you didn't pursue I wasn't it? active. Yeah, wow. I wasn't active as an artist back then. Yeah. But, you know, from what I hear, I know how it looked. You know, you brought your portfolio, you had to do slides, things like that reach out to galleries rather than the other way around. That's, I think we have it much easier. And so when did that um, happen for you? So you, you come out of this, this hibernation for 20 years, you have social media (laughs) and then, and then the gallery and then they have representation. 
How long after you starting back did you get gallery representation? Um, pretty pretty soon <laughs> but that was oh, that's encouraging <laughs> that was kind of lucky i mean the, yeah. the gallery that i started working with was a local gallery here i'm still with them very happily schindler right Eric schindler gallery in richmond yeah, yeah. yeah and that was through the, just i was going to their openings and um and again i think it happened through social media because the gallery owner reached out to me through facebook i think seeing some drawings <laughs> from the figure drawing there you go that uh, i okay. posted and she was like hey i'd like to see them in person want to come bring them to the gallery and she liked what she saw and she put a few of them in like a group show so uh-huh. that started developing that way and then um how long have you been with this gallery then five years um, five years mm, what is it i don't know so four years maybe okay maybe. so it's still a decent amount of time but through that you um your work has changed right. quite a bit between right. 2015 2016 and now was there encouragement through the gallery i mean, uh, uh-huh. they're very supportive in a way you know you do your thing and we'll show it <laughs> kind of which i love in that approach, so yeah, they, they they wouldn't tell me what they like or what sells or anything like that. Yeah. Um, Do you worry about that at all? Is that concerns of yours? Um, probably should be right, but um, no. No, I <laughs> don't know, think it should be. But. <laughs> not with this gallery specifically, not. But like, if you're asking in general, of course there is tendency. Galleries <laughs> are, you know, they're, they're for profit. That's that's their business. They right. know what their base of collectors uh, are, what, mm-hmm. what they like, what sells, and that's that's right. That's legit. You know, they know what what they uh, can, uh, you know, what what they can deliver, what they can offer, and uh, what will sell. So they tend to pick their artists that way, or they will maybe try to. Haven't happened to me, like I said, but they will try to kind of lead you towards the way that they know will work and that's fine if if that's the Mm -hmm. way you also feel like you want to work like then then that's great that's a perfect match if if it's not if it's you know you're ready to move on to something completely different then i don't think it will benefit anyone in a long run yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i just it's it's i find it an interesting conversation now because I can, I 100% agree with you, but then I find so many artists that I know feeling pretty stifled right now because yeah. of the market, and you know, it's a weird. It's a huge transition for all of us. On, on yeah, it's, and it's a it's a bridge that hasn't been built yet. Really, it seems like it's happening right now. We'll see in a couple of years because it's gonna transform. It's gonna transform the how how artists. Um, sold and view it already has right it already has yeah and how how we um how we see ourselves i guess as artists you know what's our role because i'm sure you you have experienced it for yourself and for the artists you talk to we do so much uh, more of the of the like business part now even with social yeah. media but beyond that you can you can sell you promote yourself you yeah. yeah yeah i'm always interested what what's uh if you don't mind me asking what what does your normal day look like um well i wake up pretty early and we still have our youngest son is at home uh, oh, okay. so, so i start with sending him you know to school and getting ready for the day uh yeah. coffee is a must so that's probably the first, <laughs> yeah, the very first thing I do, yeah. and then I do, yeah, the the business, the part. business stuff, yeah, yeah. The emails, yeah. the the messages. If I have something to post, I'll post it in the morning, kind of to have it done and out there, and um, you know, answer a few maybe comments or messages that come right away, and then I leave it, I let it be, <laughs> you know, live yeah, my yeah. own life, and then check again sometime in the afternoon and that time between like the whenever i'm done with it in the morning until four or or so is my time in a studio so my studio is attached to our house so i don't oh, nice. really commute. so it's not until f- about 4 p.m that you get into the studio no 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 so from okay. you know like 9 
10 a.m. to oh, 4 p.m. Until, um, I'm sorry. Okay. Time. Yeah. That's oh, that's right. good. Yeah. So you get I, in early. I paint, I draw. I mean, there's other stuff that has to be done, you know, often like uh, stretching, or I don't know, all the, the, the fun stuff. The, yeah, the fun stuff <laughs> that, that we do. But it's my studio time, and I'm pretty, nice. you know, like focused and organized. And that I'm there, nothing else is happening. Yeah, yeah, that's on regular basis, you know. When, when, like I said, when nothing else is happening, nobody's sick, or I don't have some, you know, serious errands and things to do. Yeah, no corona scares. There you no. go. Yeah, <laughs> run, you know, buy toilet paper and <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, yeah. Hunting down toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so funny how that's changed that uh, that routine. I can't remember who I was talking to recently, but we we're kind of talking about you know the old days or whatever. But when it was just wake up and paint, like yeah. I remember just coffee in hand. But I actually, I was I went into it begrudgingly with uh-huh. doing all these emails and stuff. But I actually like it now. I find it's a a way to warm up my head. Yeah. Yeah, sort of, and it's a you way know. to connect with people. Like there is, there is yes. an actual person on the, you know, on the other end. It's often yeah. young people. You know, there are collectors who are asking specific questions, but there are also students, young people. Somebody yes. just wants to tell you that they really loved it. They moved them in such a such a way because of this and this situation that they're going through, and that's amazing. How else would you would you hear it? and know about it it's not like people will be that open at your opening you know in a gallery setting or a, yeah it's right? Not, not right and this yeah. is just you know you just type in and send and yeah so i, I love that part <laughs> yeah yeah and i think as it, students too it, it's great um because I, I don't know why it's been in the last two years i've for me, I've had an increasing number of like younger artists contacting uh-huh. and asking advice, and I'm sure you get that a lot. Yeah, I and, don't know what to say, but <laughs> don't ask. Yeah, me. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't do it um, <laughs> unless it's technical advice. I can't help. Right. But it's it's so great though that they have that platform because I remember as a younger yeah. artist looking up to artists, and I'm like, there's no way. I don't know how to even contact them and then now you can contact somebody it wasn't anyway and even like going through galleries galleries were somewhat somewhat protective of the of you know that they were the link between you and a collector or the public so they didn't really want yeah you to have that access (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, and otherwise you would look like a stalker. I mean, you could wait outside their house if you know where they live. (laughs) I actually know somebody who did that. Oh gosh. Yeah, don't do that either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who who were the artists like um because I imagine too, like when you I'm sorry to keep hanging on to this idea of when you were getting back into it, but I find that yeah. really fascinating. And w- who were the artists were or were you looking at artists like that to get you going again? Like to inspire you? Mm, I don't think I knew many you in similar situation and again you know this is a bigger conversation which is very you know like on timely right now women you know in art yeah i yeah. didn't know many women not certainly not big names you know they're yeah. forgotten it's it's only now that we bring back to life the the female the female painters um so it it wasn't like i could you know kind of uh, follow somebody's steps. How do you navigate family and 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 work? But I, I I didn't. I don't remember knowing you know the big names. But I do remember listening to an interview with Ali Cavano some time uh-huh. ago. One of her earlier um, interviews where she does talk a little bit about about family and raising children and just kind of the idea I got from it, it was it's possible. You know, people people do it. <laughs> you yeah. Can, yeah, you can have both. You don't have to, yeah, you know, give up on. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. I don't even feel like it's not my place to even speak on on the topic. But I'm just trying to imagine that because I, I try to think of things I can associate with that where I only was felt there were binary. Mm-hmm. options mm-hmm. you either do right. this or you do yeah. this but you can't do the both and it's such a great thing when you see somebody who who does it You're like oh light bulb yeah. like this is something like, this can be done so for you that was a, a huge kind of inspiration 
Um, it helped. It was yeah. already, you know, I was already kind of on the path when I heard Ali Cavano, but I remember it made an impression on me because I even I reached out to her, just message that I listened to her. I just listened to her interview yeah. and I found it like inspiring in a way you not know, like um, to keep going what I'm what I'm trying yeah. to do. And and yeah. she wrote back, she was very, you know, generous to just like cheer me on. You got it, girl. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome yeah so that's that and again that's the good thing about the whole you know internet instagram social media you have this kind of I- uh, immediate interaction and, and feedback and yeah do you think it's um and again sorry if i sound stupid as as a, <laughs> a, a, ma- a male trying to navigate this yeah, topic but mansplain it to me <laughs> no, yeah, I, I will try not to mansplain. Sure. Um, but no, has, has social media? Do you think has it leveled the playing field at all? I hope it does. I hope it helps. You know, there is still a big difference, though. You know, the it's still a bit of a boys' club. Even, yeah, it's still yeah, yeah. just you know, just like looking at the names, open yeah. big gallery. A website and just look at the <laughs> look at the names how many are female and male and yeah. there are many reasons for it of course but i think it's changing i think i think i see the difference and it's only for the better so let's let's hope in a couple of years it really will be an an equal field yeah, it should move faster, though. Because, yeah. I mean, watching, that was another eye-opening thing. I mean, of course, I've been aware of the history, but seeing with Alice Neal the struggle of not just family, but the pro- uh, professional career and what she had to do as a female artist yeah. was insane. It's disgusting how terrible it was for her. Even I found it even funny, like even now, I think the documentary was like 2007 or something like that. It was a while back. But even I think it was Alex Katz they were interviewing, and he even made some like kind of chauvinistic comments yeah. then about her. Like, so that just gives you the perspective. If that was in two thousand seven, and he's kind of being a bit of a dick, yeah. then you know what it was like in nineteen fifty seven. Or yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Were there any other artists uh, aside from Ali that kind of started? You know, I don't know if shining that light or whatever is the right analogy, but that, that you were coming across. Um, I mean, there were many that I, you know, I like, I would see little, you know, different like glimpses of hope <laughs> or, you know, yeah, yeah. that I liked, not necessarily women or artists that were friendly enough to give you an advice. Not that I reached out, but like to read something they, they, they said or posted that I felt like, oh, that's really helpful. Yeah. And that's both very practical things about studio practice. And, you know, if you do that, that will help to and things like, you know, on a philosophical level you know how to see it what's the long long kind of perspective for for what we're doing what is the meaning why are we doing it so like one thing i like to do is listen to art podcasts you know like yours like yeah yeah. there is many i love art podcasts and that's a new thing that's completely new yeah and it's wonderful you you listen to and it's very often you know you find somebody like oh i don't know his work or her and you look it up and it's like oh it's it's great but it's completely different but i'll give it a shot why not and then you find so many similarities in the way they they see something or they explain or even if it doesn't sound similar they like you said they'll help you understand things or something you can use the way they paint, the way they see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, invaluable. Yeah, I'm I'm so surprised that, I mean, for myself, I'm just a podcast junkie in right. general. I have same. so way too many. Are you the same? Yeah. Outside of same. art? Yeah. Same. I mean, same it's free media. Like, it's amazing what you can listen to. But I'm still amazed about how many artist friends I know who don't listen to any podcast let alone art podcasts. And I know a lot of artists that don't. And again, I see that as such a gem. Cause like you're saying, it's like, I may not even 
be into the work so much. Uh But what you can glean listening to somebody talk about or just having a conversation like this, there's literally been life-changing moments for me hearing another artist whose work is not my thing, but their approach, their philosophy completely changed me. I agree. It's insane not to listen to them. What do you listen to outside of our podcast? (laughs) Now I'm curious. (laughs) Not that much. Let's dig a little deeper. I listen to books. So I. Oh, you like audiobooks? I I like audiobooks. And, you know, I was thinking, like, when you said that not many artists or like some don't listen to podcasts, I know some artists don't like, you know, listening to someone talking when they paint because they just that distracts their, Mm -hmm. you know, way of their thoughts, (laughs) their inner monologue or something. So I'm the opposite. I like when somebody talks keeps me kind of grounded and focused. Yeah. So I listen to a lot of books, audiobooks on on like apps, Audible and, and different things and podcasts on different topics, mainly art podcasts, but other oh, okay. music but with music I'm kinda picky. I mean some music bothers me. <laughs> and I don't and I have to change it quickly so that bothers me you know the track <laughs> I have to yeah switch the the track flip the <laughs> yeah 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 that's interesting because I'm I'm one of those I cannot well it's weird I'm a little weird in that so I definitely can't listen to audiobooks oh okay. completely because my brain I'm probably kind of you know stupid but um <laughs> it, it can only do one or the other I'm like you listen to this book okay. or you paint but I can definitely listen to podcasts Mm-hmm. For some reason, I don't know why that is. I think podcasts, if it's because I love conversational ones, mm-hmm. so if I zone out for a bit, I'm not missing much. Yeah, you know, well, so maybe I do that. zone out when I listen to books, you know, because I'm like done seven hours past, and I'm like, I think I know what happened, but it's <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Which is fine yeah. too, you know. Which is fine. <laughs> do you have a, a specific genre that you're into? Um, I like wide range. I like science fiction. I like uh, really? science fiction. I like, um, oh, now, now I'm going to butcher his name, Ish, uh, Kazumi Ishugara. Ish, uh, Ish, uh, Ish, uh, Ish, uh, sure, I would have no yeah, idea. Well, so go ahead and butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> I should know, though. But I like the uh, old science fiction, like Asimov and Lem and... Oh, okay, and yeah, yeah. K. Dick, of course, Philip's K. Dick. Mm-hmm. And I yeah, those are familiar re- with. Re listen to his stories, his short stories, just for the fun of it. Yeah, 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 they're amazing. And he was so. Um, I, I, man, I haven't read sci fi in a long time. I used to be really into science fiction, like Frank Herbert mm. and um, some of the bigger names. But what I always found so fascinating with those earlier ones is they were so prophetic, the way they were looking uh, into yeah. the future so much frighteningly came true mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know especially with asimov with asimov yeah well orwell yeah. <laughs> for one thing yeah. you know 1994 a little, <laughs> little bit scarier scary yeah <laughs> you're touched you're hitting home right now <laughs> how is it we don't have to get into the politics right you know in in uh specifics but how is it for you in the u.s right now because I'm completely open with it. Like, I don't want to be in the United States right now. And it has nothing to do. I don't care if it's Republican or Democrat running it. Mm-hmm. I can't stand how people are handling it. it so it's is, not so much the politics, but the people. You that, definitely that, feel it. You definitely feel it. Everyone. Yeah. yeah it's, it's anxious. It's everyone's stressed out. It's kind of, you know, the blades are out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It knives, feels that way. Knives out kind of situation. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what to say because I love it and I hate it. And it's the same when I go back now, you know, being, being away for so long, I go uh-huh. back to Europe and I love a lot of it, the way in, of life, you know, the walking every day, everywhere, the community yeah. part, the, the public spaces, you know, you, you go, um, to get, I don't know what, grocery shopping or go buy a book on a corner store and you feel like you did something, like you lived because you saw other people, you you looked at faces, you greeted someone, you saw a kid, a dog, and I don't know what, the mailman. <laughs> you come back yeah, yeah. home and you feel like, you know, something happened. I don't know, life is good. And here we're so just, I don't know, hiding in our own, here in States. It's so individualistic and separated and 
But there are things, you know, I go to Europe and there are things that annoy me there and <laughs> that are that are wrong and completely disorganized and the bureaucracy. Yeah. I'm sure you, you know that part in, in, in living in France, you're right. Oh there, the bureaucracy, my God. Should be working and don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It's it's I think it took me a while, but I mean obviously I I prefer to be here, at least at the moment. But I'm definitely like as in America when I first got here, I was one of those people who's like, oh, this is magic land. Everything yeah. is so perfect. And now it's just I see it's like, no, it's the same with different problems. Right. Like the bureaucracy right. here is nuts, at least in France. Good luck trying to open your own business. It's insane. It's yeah. so much easier in the U.S. But the things that you mentioned, I'm wondering I'm starting to see is maybe they're more important. Like we're so separated from, I mean, it's a layered onion, of course, but just things like that community aspect, like here, at least in Paris, it's closer. But when I walk, I go to a mom and pop shop. I buy some bread, have a little conversation. Mm -hmm. It does, it does do something. It makes me feel really good. And I come home and I'm like, I had some good conversations, yeah. talked to some nice Especially people. In the long run, you know, if this is your way of, of living, it just you yeah. don't know how and why, but it it grows on you and it yeah, changes your outlook. And here is the other way, you know, it's convenient. It's, yeah, I have a garage and I can drive everywhere and there are big parking lots. So you, yeah. it's, it's all good. But then after a while, you're like, I don't know what's happening, but... Did a week passed or a month or yeah 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 kind of like yeah. that and I don't really know my neighbors I do but <laughs> it, no I know what you mean yeah. I don't say it's the difference between suburban and and city life we always lived yeah. in big cities I mean growing up in Europe I'm from Warsaw and then living in in Europe in Belgium and Minneapolis even and now we're in the suburbs because of schools of course you know how how it is in the states yeah so we're in the suburbs where you drive everywhere and when you know the distances is, are are huge to everything mm -hmm. it's been so selfish for me in doing this podcast because i get to just talk now with painters i admire and i'm finding it interesting how non-technical a lot of artists i know are about their materials mm -hmm. i never wanted to go into like technical questions but i am curious like for you um where do you lie on that? Like, are you very particular about your materials, like no, brushes? not very particular. Brushes, especially. I I destroy brushes really quick <laughs> because of the way, you know, I apply paint. It's a heavy impasto. And also, I like to, like, really, you know, drive it into the canvas. Yeah. So, and I don't know, I tried more expensive brushes, less expensive. They all get ruined. So I just right. buy whatever has the right shape I want. And I like I like round brushes. I like bristles. The brand doesn't matter. I buy a lot. I throw them away. With paint, I'm a little more picky. So I think it is true. The better brands just... Yeah, pigment load. Well. The colors are long-lasting. The, yeah. the texture is is just right, creamy and everything. So I like... I like the better brands of, of oil paint because I only paint in oil. Other than that, I'm not not particular, don't have yeah, you know, that that's that's why it's hard to give people recommendations. I'm just like, whatever works, man. Just find, <laughs> find the one that works for you. If you can afford it, go for the you know. Yeah, if a fork works, <laughs> use it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, if Richard Schmidt uses certain brand of paper towels, you're not gonna paint like him just because you use the same brand. <laughs> that's wait that's so funny that you say that like do you did you choose that specifically because yeah, there is the, because oh, the there bounty is specific <laughs> viva or viva that's what it was viva paper <laughs> towels i remember that from art school <laughs> watching the video like yeah. everybody the next week had viva paper yeah. towels yeah. and i'm sure they're great but <laughs> i know enough the, money yeah local grocery store brand <laughs> Yeah, because I love how those little decisions, because for me, um, where I went to school, it was so technical. And I probably talk about this way too much on this podcast. But um, 
it took a long time to kind of start shedding. Like first I had to realize like, oh, I need to shed all these things that oh, I've learned because yeah. I learned to paint like this, oh, teacher, this teacher. too, right? I feel like they, there needs to be a balance. You need those technical things because it gives you like a, like a safety net. Like, you know, okay, I think I know that. I don't have to worry about, you know, what paint, what, what colors even, because people ask, ask that, you know, how do I make skin tones? And it's such a wide question and there is no easy answer, but I understand why they ask. Like if they really have no idea or struggle, you know, can't imagine painting somebody who looks like the person, they really need you to tell them, okay, it's white, yellow, red. Now the yellow is, Either. And so you go into specific. Yeah, yeah. You know they have that. They're like, okay, I think I can do it. I have that much. I can, I can start. Yeah. I can, yeah, have somewhere to start. So I understand why there just needs to be a balance, you know, f- like flexibility. Okay, you can use that, but try if maybe you are more comfortable with, and so on and so on with kind of everything we we teach or we we say. I think as. As long as it's not not taught as a dogma, you know, like that's the right. only way. You, no, you can't do it the other way. That's the bad way. That's the good way. That, that's, <laughs> don't that's, use that's, line. Right. <laughs> there is no line in nature. <laughs> You're a hundred percent right. I totally agree with you. But it, it, I think I wish somebody again. I'm not the sharpest tack in the box, <laughs> but I, a, a, a very eye opening thing for me is when I started. Like uh, take Alice Neal, for example, like watching her paint. And this comes from what we were just talking about. Technically, it it hit me at one point that a certain a person's style or their look may not be what they're using. It may be what they're not using. Uh. So like you're saying with materials, like I watch certain painters and they're like, oh, they're not worrying about the brush. It's because it's in their arm, the way they're pushing in or something. That's a good point. I haven't thought about it. But I, I think you're 100 percent right. Like the balance would be the, the crucial balance thing. Would be, yeah, because you 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 do need the, you know, something, some guidance in the beginning, especially. I think it's very yeah. valuable, and what the you know the whole atelier movement does. It's a good start. It's a good start to you know to learn about construction, about the size mm. method, about anatomy, so you know what's inside. So important, yeah. There, I'm sure there are geniuses who just, you know, start with the eye and or what was it? Who was starting with the big toe of the foot and finishing the rest? I don't know, some Russian giant, one of those, realists, you know? Repping. Yeah, somebody like that. I'm sure there are people like that. But for the rest yeah. of us, <laughs> you yeah, need exactly. to know how the skull looks. Where is the eye socket? How is the eye you know, in relation to everything else and so on, the spine and then the muscle on the top of it and mm-hmm. how we move and sit and and the face planes. There is so much. And it helps if you know it, if it's in the back of your mind and then you pick and choose what helps you. That made me think of then for you in your studio practice, how... Where do you find the intersection between that technical information and your own instinct? I I appreciate both. Just like yeah. I said, you know, I, I took my time a little bit to learn the anatomy. Not that I can name any of the muscles, but I kind of know where they are and how yeah, I yeah. drew, you know, just for myself, looking at anatomy books, I drew the skull. And the, the whole skeleton and then the muscles. And I went through those theories like like Loomis, like the face play. And, the planes, and, yeah. Yes, and the proportions of the face and the whole body and the movement even, how we how we move. Just to kind of to, to, to learn it from a theoretical point of view and then to apply it. So the next time I paint a, a model in a figure drawing, I see how he sits and I'm thinking about it, okay, the tilt of the of the pelvis has to be this way or it will look unnatural or mm-hmm. i make the lines you know the, for for the hips for the shoulders things like that it helps especially when you maybe in the beginning when you establish the proportions or when you struggle with something because i often start with a gesture line it's not not just like built constructed 
I'll start with, with a gesture line, but it doesn't look right. Sometimes it works. So I have a, you know, I can start again until it looks great or I can, or I can correct it. And when I'm correcting it, I'm thinking, okay, that's impossible. The back would never tilt that far back because then you're out of balance with the rib cage. And that yeah. helps because I've seen how the rib cage looks inside the body and what is the proportion to, to, the, to the hip bone mm-hmm. and, and things like that. Yeah. So you're kind of, for you, it's like going in between the technical information yeah. and maybe I, an I instinctive like emotional back level. Back and forth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How long did it was that something? Because I found again, I can only speak from my own experience. I had to make conscious decisions to move in that direction for me and my work. Was it the same for you, or was it something that was more natural? Into more intuitive or to more intuitive, emotional, uh, kind of natural, <laughs> kind of natural for you. Yeah, yeah. kind of natural. I think like the because uh, I'm trying to think. You know, I'm trying to think like. Why do I even do it? Like, why do I draw a person or this person? Like, there must uh-huh. have been something that that moved me in the first place. Because, for example, the the portraits I do, the, the people I paint are usually people I know, or if I don't know them, there was something that drew me to them. So there is a reason behind it. And I don't really name it, and I'm not going to, you know, title the, the painting Sad Eye Boy. Because that's really, you know, but I'm trying to yeah. think why, why do I am I drawn to this young, you know, man's face? And there is something in in his eyes that I don't really name even for myself. But then I look back at the painting and the eyes have it. You know, that was that was it. So when you when when you kind of try to like think about it like like this, there is the intuition, there is the feeling, there is the emotion that was first in the very beginning just even thinking about I want to paint this this one this person or I you know yeah. it could be a landscape why why are you you know thinking about even city sunset you know people love the colorful sky sunset sunrises why because we love it it brings a certain emotion in us and and we are moved the, the at the moment when we see it and then we're moved again when we see the painting on our wall and we're hoping that the people who who buy it, who will have it in their homes, are moved the same way or different way, but moved by it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. If, if, I, if I've learned anything doing this podcast, it's to end on a high note. And I think that was the highest note we could have ended oh, on. That was oh, good. absolutely perfect. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Go for emotion. What, <laughs> what else is in life then? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I hundred percent agree um what do you have you just had an auction recently do you have anything coming up yeah, there is another auction coming this saturday so that's all local it's just like it's all happening in the spring here so there is another auction at art space richmond this saturday um, i'm in a couple of group shows i'll have a solo show next year in the spring april 2021 and that's at eric schindler gallery Oh, and I'm in a show at the museum here in Virginia. So that's the Contemporary uh, Museum, the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art in Virginia Beach. And there is um, an uh, exhibition, a show called The New Waves 2020. So that's kind of highlighting the the new artists in Virginia. And I'm one of them. Oh, okay. And that's opening March 20th, and it will be at the museum for till August for a couple of months. Congrats. That sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah, that you said. I'm kind of active on social media. So whenever something like that is happening, it's on my Instagram, on my website. Thank you for taking the time out. I really, I told you when um, that, during that message, and I wasn't lying, I when I first started this, I made a long list of mm. people like, who do I, who would I love to talk to? And you're on my list. So when you Man, sent that. That makes like, me so happy. And you know, I follow your work for a long time too. So it's, it's a mutual thank. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we'll be we'll be in touch. Absolutely. Lo Fi Sight and Sound Podcast is an American artist living in Paris, France, in conversation with artists, musicians, and filmmakers discussing context, the creative process, and studio practice. 
You can find us on all streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. Also at www.lofipodcast.com. No hyphens. Please rate and review. It helps more than you know. If you can't rate and review, then please share this with a friend. Lo-Fi Podcast is recorded, mixed, and edited by myself. Intro music is also by me. Thank you for listening. (laughs) 